This is Annalise Mitchell. A what? real recording from her exorcism will be played at the end, so I'm just giving you a warning right now. Annalise lived in Germany. You already know what it is. It's your boy Laid Back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, TikTok, you up to bat. Bah. It's your boy Laid Back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we got to do. You got to hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos. Make sure you hit the like button. But we back with another TikTok reaction, man. Hey, we got conspiracy theories and we got some scary shit popping off in here, man. And a lot of random stuff too. But we got some scary stuff. We getting back to it. <sighs> That's why I wore the hoodie, just in case the hood need to come up. But look, man, you make it to the end of this one, I need you to drop in the comments, real one for real, because that's what you are. Also, if you into this type of stuff, man, I got a TikTok playlist. You can go ahead, sit there, watch it, binge watch it, enjoy yourself, and trip out. Make sure you share this with one of your friends, too, man. But let's go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad, what's popping? Let's get it. Do you think it's true? Do you think that our government has the possession of some sort of, of, of technology that they're not sharing with oh, the man. rest of science and academia? They're not sharing. Do your own research. Do your own research. With the public. The, the incident that happened at Roswell, it wasn't just that one craft. Multiple craft came down that day. We were using something called a scalar weapon. We were aware of these craft. Yeah. We use a scalar weapon. We realized early on that different frequencies were affecting the navigation of these craft. And we use that weapon. It wasn't really a weapon. We use it as a weapon to bring them down. Mm -hmm. And then we recovered recovered those crash those crash to UFOs. See that that sort of troubles me. You know, I don't I can't imagine if there was these this other civilization that had vehicles that are able to do the things they do, like the way these pilots describe them. How would mm -hmm. we be able to take them down? I well, don't. Just that know, just you, doesn't you, compute you know, to me. Well, you know, space travel is very dangerous. So, you know, going to Mars, which is right around the corner, is a deadly mission. Like, anybody who gets up enough gall to go there, they understand that they might, even, might not even leave our atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, and even in 100 years from now, traveling to Mars is still dangerous. Mm. And imagine you're a civilization that's taking your first trip to the, uh, you know, to the Earth solar system area. Mm -hmm. You ever heard about the aliens that contacted us in 1981 trying to tell us how to stop reincarnating as humans over and over and over again? What? <laughs> You're full of <laughs> That's what I thought too, until I heard the full story. In 1981, Carla Rucker, who was a girl from Kentucky, began receiving telepathic contact from a group of entities calling themselves Ra. According to mm -hmm. Rucker, these were the collect, okay, hold, stick with me, the collective consciousness from a higher dimension of the planet Venus, they evolved 2.6 billion years ago into what? a higher dimension and they came back to give us information and to tell us how to stop reincarnating and much more. Mm. Then over the next couple years, they kept this contact going and there was three of them. There was Carla herself, there was Don, then there was also Jim, who Jim wrote down everything. Don was the one asking questions. It was kind of written in a Q&A format and they, because they were asking questions to this entity, but the entity was actually talking through Carla. And all of these Whoa. conversations they actually put into a book, a book series, actually I think four or five books, and it's called The Law of One. So what you're saying is she got possessed. I wouldn't say she was possessed because she had a Bible at her head in order to make contact with them. What? And also this is all documented extensively. Like they had microphones on the whole time. You can actually go listen to the original audios from 1981. Okay. So how do we stop reincarnating over and over then? Well, real quick, I think it's important to understand what the main message of Ra actually is. Here's a quote from session four. The law of one, though beyond the limitations of name, as you call vibratory sound complexes, may be approximated by stating that all things are one, that there is no polarity, there is no wrong, no right, no disharmony, but only identity. All is one, and that one is love light, or light slash love, the infinite creator. So it's about everything being God. Kind of, but it's not a religious book at all. In the book, it actually says that it doesn't matter if you know about the book, The Law of One, and if you don't even know about what the Law of One actually is. That's fine. 
The only thing you need to do to move on is you need to love and be in service to others. Like mm. get to heaven, not in the traditional sense at all. In the law of one philosophy, there are seven major densities in our universe. Think of them as different thresholds that have been separated off, but they're just different vibrational pockets in which different bodies can exist. Another way to think about it is think about the ocean. When you go down in the ocean, you need to have a specific body in order to go far enough down. And mm -hmm. so what the law of one is saying, what Ron is saying is that you need to have different bodies for each density. And again, there's seven of them seven major ones that is. So then reincarnation is kind of like just playing the game of different bodies with different experiences. So how does loving others get you to a higher density? Well, according to what they're telling us, it's actually just math. If you're more than 50% in service to others, then you'll move on in the positive polarization from this third Sound density like video to fourth density. But there's also the option to move on negatively, which means you're 90, according to Law of One, 95% or more in service to yourself. So mm. there really is negative entities. Mm. In service to yourself. That was a real fucking thing that happened. Somebody unexpectedly launched a surface to air missile and hit the UFO. It fell to earth not far away and exploded by flaring up with an extremely bright light. What? At that very instant, 23 soldiers who had watched the phenomena turned into stone poles. No way. Only two soldiers who stood in the shade and were less exposed to the luminous explosion survived. Remains of the UFO and the petrified soldiers were transferred to a secret scientific research institution near Moscow. No way. Specialists assume that a source of energy that is still unknown to Earthlings instantly changed the structure of the soldiers' living organisms, what? having transformed it into a substance whose molecular composition is no different from that of limestone. What? This is an extremely menacing case. The aliens possess such weapons and technology that go beyond all our assumptions. They can stand up for themselves if attacked. What? What Edward Teller and Oppenheimer didn't understand when they were developing that is that when you detonate an atomic bomb, you get, everybody knows about an electromagnetic pulse, the pulse that goes out, knocks out all electronic communication. What people didn't know about is something that Tesla had written about decades earlier, and that there's also a pulse of what's called scalar energy. And scalar is faster than the speed of light. Uh, you know, a light wave is like this, right? A wave of light. Coherent light, a laser is just synced up, green or red or what have you. A scalar wave is a point that goes out in a straight line and doesn't have the wave function. So it's very fast. Um, and that scalar wave that came out of the atomic explosions disrupt interstellar communications and travel. Whoa, this next level stuff. Scalar energy is really fascinating. It's one of those things that because it's outside of the normal paradigm of the physical aspects of physics and modern science, there's a lot of different perspectives on it. And so people approach it from different directions, but it really appears that potentially the faster than light energies or the energies that are more similar to the biological energy that's in our physical body, rather than a purely electromagnetic paradigm. With lots of these energies, everything depends on resonance. So you find immediate effects when, for example, people do distance healing. Like all studies of distance healing, you don't have to wait from the moment that the distant healer does something to the person, although the person receiving the transmission may be on the other side of the earth. And if you what? looked at it from a physical perspective, there would be a time lag for the wave to electromagnetically transmit to the side of the earth, but it doesn't work that way. Really? It happens instantaneously. What? Put me on. If you know. Nothing is what it seems. Uh, don't worry if you can't hear what I'm saying. Um, I couldn't even hear myself. This is the loudest sound you could possibly conceive. They make it clear. And as it turns out, the cleanest. They make it clouds, bro. Now, the most amazing thing is that that cloud up there, which was generated by the engine, it's just a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. It's water vapor. And in about an hour's time, someone in Mississippi is going to get wet once it will actually rain. What? You will be rain. I told you. Wow. 
It's raining! <laughs> That's unbelievable! Man, people are crazy. NASA's playing Humans, bro. It's making its own weather. NASA, of course. A billionaire friend of mine, who's a legitimate billionaire, mm -hmm. told me that it's entirely possible that some of these guys are trillionaires. Some of these Middle Eastern guys. He's like, you've never seen wealth like this. It's, it's insane. In, do you know in the United Arab Emirates, they make it rain every week? Once a week, they make it rain. I mean, they seed the clouds. Really? They make it rain. Yeah, because they're in the desert. And they're like, eh, mm. I don't like this. I like it to rain. So they fucking put all that shit that they have to put into the sky to make it rain, which they've been doing forever, cloud seeding, but mm. insanely expensive. But they do it once a week. So 52 times a year it rains there. You have been reading the weather app absolutely wrong your entire life and it's not even your fault because we were not taught any of this when we first got our iPhones and would click on the weather app. So okay. let's get right into this. So the basics are pretty obvious. You can see what time it is when the sunset happens, what the expected temperatures at those times, as well as the highs on the le on the right and the lows on the left. And if it's gonna be really warm, you can see it start going towards the red. But this is where things get really interesting. So on the daily, you can see the precipitation on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. The 60% does not mean there's a 60% chance of rain. That means it's gonna rain and 60% of the area is gonna be covered in rain. Cause you know mm. how your friend might live 10 houses away from you and they don't get rain, but you do. That is the percentage of cover of rain. Wow. And lastly, this section is always missed out. If you scroll all the way down, it'll tell you what it feels like outside. Because right now it said it was, what, 56, but it feels like 52. Mm -hmm. You can see as far as 11 miles, the humidity, and what the next expected rainfall is. The weather app is way better than you realize. I ain't know nothing about that percentage, for sure. Hurricanes are experiments. Oh, hurricanes was real too? Good morning. This tank gives scientists and the rest of us a view no one has ever had before. What a hurricane's what power looks like at water yeah. level as it storms ashore. In just two minutes, scientists here can take calm waters and turn them into a monster hurricane. They can do what now? The wind is gradually getting stronger and stronger as, it, as it's coming up here and it's ramping up to a category five. It's probably about a category three right now. We what? use nature this as a weapon. This foot long tank is the first simulator in the world. A laser could start the rain. Pay attention. You can almost use it to set it off. Matt Mills got into lasers as a kid. It's just innately cool. Now he's part of a team of scientists and military backers on the cutting edge of a new technology. We created a cloud of our own behind no. Matt's lab. A few months ago, Matt's colleagues in Arizona got this working experimentally. The next step is to get it to work in the sky. Particles in the air are rubbing together, forming static electricity, and the conditions are now right. And they just need to be triggered now. Does this concern you that you may be messing with Mother Nature and doing they something that you don't completely understand up here in the cloud? Uh, I, I mean, I suppose that's always a danger, but we're not even near to the case where it could be dangerous yet, so they not too much. Right it's almost like an yeah. on-off switch for a thunderstorm. That's the idea behind it. They don't care about what they... Man, look, they just doing what they do. Well, world, this is it. Hey, Mr. S, I didn't know you budgied. I want to live. No, no, you're too heavy. It's a glandular problem. Warlock. Ah! Ah! Judge. Mole people. There is no escape from the fortress of the mole. Top secret CIA weather control division, Dick speaking. I mean pizza store. Oh, it's you, Stan. What kind of favor? Change the weather, Kim Trail. Wow, no way. Just like that. In two minutes. That's what Buddy said. Anytime we make mention about God doing something through the weather, you know what people say? That Satan controls the weather. Heart controls the weather. You want to know something? Though Satan is called the God of this age, and though Satan can influence the weather, and though I do believe in cloud seeding and harp and all of that, guess what? God oversees everything and nothing at all in this world 
can happen without it going through heaven's courtroom first, directly or indirectly. There are some things that happen that God's not a fan of and that he doesn't love and that he doesn't like. Nevertheless, because of the legality that's in the earth realm and people giving the enemy legal right, he passes it through because it's what the people want. You have to remember, God gave the earth to man. Man gave it to Satan. God speaks to his prophets and he speaks to people and he has his way with the world through his people, through intercession and prayers. But you have to remember in this time, in this age, Satan is called the God of this age, right? And mankind has control over it. God is allowed legality, spiritual legality. So God allows what we desire. So it has to pass through God and God even orchestrates, though he himself won't have his hand directly in some things, he can still orchestrate the pieces of it. God himself won't have his hands in some things. When he's omnipresent, he's everywhere, he control. I'm Y'all let me know in the comments. I don't know. That makes sense. So it even does. though the enemy in heart may do something, it still has to pass through heaven's courtroom first. Through heaven's legality system or the heaven's legal system. Follow for more. Click the link in my bio on my story to join about? this month's class in Bible prophecy, the Antichrist, the system. Mark of the Beast, the False Prophet, and more. It's not a live class, it's pre recorded. So if you work, you have the links to watch at a later date. Let me know what you think in the comments. Bro, I was just talking to these two people, right? I was literally telling them about the shit. This girl right here with the blue, with the blue Walmart vest, slave vest. I told her, look at what's upset. Look at this. Look. Look, bro. Bro, y'all not seen this? Bro. Bro, is Seth Roth coming down here? What is this? No! Yeah, that look well. Bro, the sun is like over there. Dude, it's like the it's like the clouds are like sucking up. It's like the clouds are sucking in. Dude, I never seen no clouds like this, bro. I'm telling you. That's wild, bro. Look at the clouds. Every everything around this, like, there's no clouds, nothing. Right. Dog, that's crazy. Let me know what this is, y'all, because this ain't no typical weather or it's caused by some fertilizer. No, bro, it's something more. And we already know what it is out of them solar eclipse. But. Yeah, let me know what this is, man, because, like, what is this green part? Green part? I don't know what it is, but something's up. There was a girl who couldn't leave her room every October 10th of the year. Why October 10th? This is why. So the mom, whenever uh, the date came, she would mark it on the calendar. She would circle it. She would highlight it. Make sure that her kid was in her room with no windows and stuff. Yeah. She never told her kid why, mm -hmm. right? And whenever she had school on that day or if she had to do something else that day, she's like, nope, you're not allowed to leave the house. So every year, both of them would, on October 10th, they would lock themselves in a room with no windows, right? Mm -hmm. And every year, fam, you would hear uh, someone ring the doorbell on the house. Yeah, yeah, Right? But the mom obviously is with the child. So she's like, no, we're staying in this room. We're staying in this room. And as soon as um uh, midnight hits and October 11th comes, yeah, the knocking, the ringing of the doorbell disappears. But why that day? Like, what? Exactly. Uh, trust me, uh, it's building up. It's building up. So one day... Get the f*** out of here. Get out of here, bro. Real footage. Damn. This is the story of Chris Lemons. And by the way, you are about to see all of the real footage. Chris is a saturation diver. Divers will spend a month at a time in something called a bell. From the bell, they throw on their suits and they jump out to the bottom of the ocean. A month? They are also attached with a line called an umbilical. And this line provides them with gas, electricity, and communication with the ship overhead. So uh, this is the moment of truth when we get on board, when we uh, 
check the board uh, to see who we're going to be in sat with. <laughs> just a bar for every day. A bar for every day. <laughs> I've only started just to check him out. Yeah. <laughs> this is Duncan. He is the bellman, so he's going to go underwater with Chris, but he is going to stay on the bell and make sure everything runs smoothly. Dave, on the other hand, is sat diver too. He is going to be going underwater with Chris. So Duncan throws on their gear, then they climb out the bottom of the bell onto a platform. It is a metal grate and they are standing just above the abyss in pitch dark ocean. And they are about to float down to the seabed. You gotta understand, when you are floating down there, it is terrifying. You have no idea where you're gonna land. You have no idea what creatures are down there. Mm. By the way, saturation divers get attacked all the time. You are wow. basically in space. So here is the footage of their descent. This is crazy. A month at a time, though? This stuff look crazy. So he at the bottom. He about to see some crazy shit. Now that they are on the ocean floor, they make their way to a structure called a manifold. But unfortunately, on the surface, things start to go wrong. Oh shit, you don't even know what's going on on the surface either. We are losing position. All computers in the ship fail. This sends the vessel drifting through the ocean. No. Remember, these divers are hooked to the ship with an umbilical. If they don't get back in the bell, they are going to be dragged through the ocean floor. So the captain says, get back in the bell right now. And Chris and Dave start climbing over the structure. They have to climb their umbilicals back into the bell. Dang. time for something to go crazy. As Dave is climbing, he turns around and that's when he notices that Chris is absolutely stuck. His umbilical has been completely wedged in the structure. Chris is literally the anchor of the ship. Every bit of tension is on him. And then you start to hear the sounds of steel that is about to pop. No. Instantly cutting off his oxygen, electricity, and communication with the ship. Oh, snap. The only thing Chris has left is a bailout tank that can only last for six minutes. Dave tried to go back for Chris, but he had no more length on his umbilical. He watched in slow motion as Chris slowly faded away in the darkness. Damn. Normally you're connected to the bell by your umbilical, but he's got no umbilical. The bell isn't anywhere near him. He's got no options at all. At this point, the ship drifts farther and farther away. With the computers down, the only option they have to control the ship is these four handles. They are thrusters and they are not meant to be used in weather like this. But thankfully, eventually the computers turn back on. This is when they send an underwater drone with a live feed to find Chris's location. By this time, it had been over 20 minutes. Here is the real footage from this drone. Wow. By this point, Chris had been without his umbilical for 36 minutes. He was no longer breathing and the crew performed CPR. And miraculously, he came back. What? Not only that, but the crew were shocked to find that he was totally okay. What? They would ask him how he was feeling and he would give them a thumbs up. The crew were ecstatic, confused, frustrated, wow. every emotion you could think of. And it was truly a miracle that he was okay. Wow. The only time I ever felt serious, um, I was just halfway through taking his pulse. And he just kind of looked over at me and said, Stuart, you know it's okay. And I said, yeah, I know you're okay, yeah. 
He said, no, no, it's okay. I, I was just, I was just drifting off to sleep, you know. I was kind of sad for a bit, but then I was cold and I got a bit numb, but it was like falling asleep. It's not that bad. Mm. Uh, anything really got emotional for me in that point was, it kind of hit home that he had basically. <sighs> mm. This is crazy. He decided he was going to die. He's uh, <laughs> trying to tell me that that's okay. And that really, that really got to me. So he died or what? I thought he survived. I need water. Oh, God, I need water. <laughs> the most unexpected moments caught on doorbell camera. CCTV footage captured a homeless woman appearing confused as she barged into a home and slammed the door behind her. Barged in a home? Motherfucker. How you got your front door open anyway? Or unlocked anyway? Like, what are we doing in 2024? Somebody just walk in your crib? They going in people's houses and living in their houses and why they not there. And then you got to go to court and try to get them to get out your house. And they not letting you put them out of your house. Like, what are we talking about? After the woman closed the door, she started running toward the homeowner's daughter, causing the girl to panic. Stop. The father quickly ran over and took her out the door. However, let's see how special he handled it. The homeless woman was extremely frightened, and the man was trying to calm her down. What the hell going on? You're safe. Calm down. Thank you. I'm sorry. Please. You're okay. Okay. I just need water. I'm sorry. That's okay, but you cannot walk into people's homes. I didn't mean to. I thought my neck. No, you didn't mean to. I'm sorry. 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 I'm about to run up in my crib, man. You guys are awesome! Oh my god! So I uh, just recently came out with a brand new. E Less than two hours after that video was filmed, the girl on stage in that video would be dead. Her name was Christina Grimmie. She was a famous singer here in America and she was murdered in 2016. Dang. So Christina had been making music and performing all of her life, but her real rise to fame started when she was on the show The Voice. After Christina was on The Voice, the world kind of opened up for her. She made her major label debut, she started going on tours all across the world, and she was a rising star. Sadly though, she attracted the attention of a very disturbed individual who can actually be seen here in footage from her final show, creepily watching Christina perform from the crowd, knowing what he was about to do. Mm. That man was 27-year-old Kevin James Loibel. So Christina's performance that evening ended at about 10 p.m. And afterwards, she moved over to a little booth to sign autographs for people who had come to the show. At around 10.24 p.m., Kevin approached Christina. Christina, thinking he was just like every other fan there, opened her arms up to give him a big hug. But that's when Kevin retrieved a Glock pistol what? from his person and shot her three times at point-blank range. After the shots rang out, Christina's brother tackled Kevin to the ground. Yes, sadly, Christina's brother was there working the booth with her that evening. But after a fight, Kevin managed to get himself free, he retrieved his Glock, and he took his own life right next to Christina's body. Man, what? Sadly, Christina had been shot twice in the chest and once in the head. And by 10.59pm, not even a full hour after she finished her performance, Christina Grimmie was pronounced dead. Afterwards, Kevin's family left this note for the media. This was all they had to say after the tragedy. But fans, even to this day, remember Christina as an amazing singer, and talk about the potential that she had if she hadn't been taken from this world so quickly. This, these people be crazy. We live in life. Mm. The man you saw in that video, Richard Ragland, went on to drown that day. And this GoPro footage actually captured his final moments of life. Mm. Before his death, Richard actually served in the National Guard. Everybody remembered him as having the biggest heart and being a very smart guy. 
However, on June 4, 2017, a freak accident would cause Richard to drown in the water he was swimming in in Georgia. Mm. To this day, nobody knows exactly what killed Richard or what forced him under the water, but his friends that were with him that day stated that he went under the water, they tried to help him, but there was no way they could get him back up to the surface. Wow. So after his death, Richard's family mourned their loss. But it wasn't until years later when a diver actually recovered that GoPro sitting at the bottom of that water. What? The diver's name was Rich Abernathy. He has a YouTube channel where he goes into bodies of water and dives. And he was diving in that same water in Tennessee when he came across a GoPro. Wow. And when he looked at the contents of that GoPro, the connection was made that this was Richard Ragland, the man who had drowned there only a few years prior. I'm going to play you a little bit more of that video. It is just some really haunting stuff. Mm. Being with brothers, being with brothers and sisters, we live in life. We live in life. Wow. We live in life. See, the thing is, one thing, one common goal that we all share is the same goal. <laughs> If you want to hear more true crime stories, listen to the podcast mm. Murder in America that I co-host with my wife, Courtney. It's available on all streaming platforms. Living life. Mm. This is Annalise Mitchell. A what? real recording from her exorcism will be played at the end, so I'm just giving you a warning right now. Annalise lived in Germany with her parents, Anna and Joseph, and they were extremely religious. Anna had extreme religious practices like making her children sleep on the hardwood floor in the winter. It was her belief that others couldn't atone for their own sins, so therefore her children had to suffer on their behalf. What? Then, in 1968, when Annalise turned 16, she began to have her first incidents. Annalise would wake up in the middle of the night with a heavy pressure on her chest and mm. she couldn't breathe. She also couldn't move and this incident would completely terrify her. Anna's parents would take her to the doctor where she was diagnosed with temporal lobe epilepsy. A few years later, Annalise would get extremely sick with pneumonia and tuberculosis. Jeez. Because of this, she had to spend weeks isolated in a sanatorium. This was a type of medical facility used before the discovery of antibiotics. Mm. When Anna got back from the sanatorium, her parents noticed that her personality had completely changed. Anna began to hear voices that would tell her she was damned to rotten hell. She would see demonic faces everywhere and she developed an aversion to religious objects. Mm. She especially disliked crucifixes and pictures of Jesus and she would not look at them. During this time, she kept going to the doctor and they would give her every medication under the sun, which would quiet down the symptoms, but they would never fully go away. This is when people started to think that she was possessed. As things continued to worsen, the family finally got a priest to perform an exorcism. And at this time, her symptoms were terrible. Anna would throw herself onto her knees 400 times a day into a praying position. What? She would do this until she broke both of her kneecaps and ripped her tendons. She began what? eating the heads of birds, eating spiders, drinking her urine, and speaking in Latin to curse God. Latin is apparently the native tongue of all demons. Renz would perform Whoa. a total of 67 exorcisms, each of them lasting from one to four hours. Whoa. It was here that he learned that there are six demons possessing her. One of these demons claimed to be Lucifer himself. Hell. Now, quick warning, I've compiled the most insane clips from the exorcism, and here it is. I might have to fast forward this shit. Nah, that's fake. <laughs> that gotta be. Hell nah, we're gonna have to fast forward this shit. So, I don't wanna look at that. I don't wanna look at that. I don't wanna look at that. I ain't even
terrifying real footage of a group of men following a girl home. I want a girl home. She can't get in the door. Does anyone else remember the two teenage girls who found a lifeless body, stole his necklace, and took a Snapchat video with him? It happened in Texas back in 2021. Stop. The teens were 17-year-old Bethany Martin and her 16-year-old friend who was not named because of her age. They came across a man's body in a drainage ditch. They then called a male friend who joined them at the scene before they called police. What? The deceased man was later identified as 25-year-old Marcus Adams and mm. his death was ruled self-inflicted. Wow. The day after Marcus's body was found, the sheriff's office became aware of a video circulating online showing Bethany removing jewelry from his body while she and her 16-year-old friend laugh. Wow. When asked why they did this, they responded by saying that the 16-year-old just simply liked the necklace and it matched her style. They also took to TikTok with multiple videos. In two of them on Bethany's account, she can be seen wearing Marcus's necklace. Wow. Bethany was arrested and charged as an adult with felony theft from a human corpse. Mm. The 16-year-old was also arrested but faced lesser charges because she was considered a juvenile at the time. What is up with people, man? This is a scene captured on CCTV. A tall clown appears at the front door. From behind him he, he drags out a bloody bag and drops it at the door. He what? also flashed a creepy smile at the camera. I was riding my bike home on the day of the incident. Because of the heat, I went to a playground water tap. I took two sips of tap water, but as I was about to leave, a figure appeared in the grass. It was a big, fat clown. He grinned at me with his teeth bared. He greeted me with a creepy voice. How are you, little friend? I was terrified by the look on his face. When I came back to my senses, I said, hello, I don't think I've seen you before. He smiled and laughed excitedly I'd never seen you before either, but you don't look too happy. I was waiting here especially for you and with that he played a trick, but I didn't find it funny. Instead, it scared me even more. At this moment I just wanted to jump on the bike and get away from here, but the car was even closer to the clown. I put on a calm smile and said, thank you, I'm happy now. But to my surprise the clown's expression became even more frightening. But then I said, I'd like to make friends with you, to gain his trust. So what? I went along with him and said, yes, we could be good friends. When he heard me say that, the clown looked very happy and invited me to go on the merry-go-round. And with that he led the way. I knew this was my chance to escape. I immediately sprinted to my bike. The clown heard a noise and turned his head to find me. He angrily questioned me about where you were going. You lied about us being friends. I ignored him. I rode off at speed towards home. The clown tried to catch up with me, but his fat body. In no time I had lost him by a few hundred meters. He could only watch me go. When I got home, I locked myself in my room. I didn't dare go out for a long time. I was afraid the clown would catch up with me. It wasn't until my parents called me for dinner in the evening. Only then did I quietly let my guard down. I think I got away from the clown. But what I didn't expect was, at 1 a.m., there was a sudden banging at the door. The whole family was awakened. When we turned on the security camera at the front door, we saw a horrific sight. A fat clown, dragging a filthy snakeskin pocket from under the stairs. The red liquid on it was shocking. I shuddered to think what it contained. The clown knew the camera was filming him. He says eerily, Hello, Gerald. Your friend Grinny is here. <laughs> Come on, come on, open up. Mom's freaking out. Ask the person on the video call who you are. What do you want to do? The clown suddenly dislikes the camera. I'm a friend of your son's. He promised to play with me. At this moment, mm. I was too frightened to speak. My mother could see my panic. He wasn't my friend at all. She immediately called 911. The clown seemed to hear my mom's alarm, turned around and disappeared into the darkness. But the bag full of red liquid was left at the door. When the police arrived, we dared to open the door. With the help of the police, we opened the bag together. But what we didn't expect was, it wasn't a broken limb inside, but a pile of rotting red tomatoes. It turned out to be a prank played by the fat clown. People better ban.
This is the Hello Kitty murder case, and it's one of the most gruesome true crime stories you may ever hear about. This happened in 1999, and Fan here was abducted by three men and a girl. Fan Man Yu was then held inside of a flat that one of the killers rented out for about a month. What? She was tortured and beaten, and they even tried to pimp her out. And apparently, she was hung up and used as a punching bag. Whoa. They even went as far as burning up her legs so that she couldn't even walk. What? She also had no real food to eat. They forced her to eat human feces. After that immense stress her body went through, she died after a little over a month being held captive there. This is where things get even crazier. They cut up her body, dismembered her completely, and then cooked up her head. They then stuffed her half-cooked head into a Hello Kitty mermaid doll. What? Investigators found this and found many insects inside of it as well. The rest of her dismembered body was discarded somewhere. The only pieces of evidence the investigators found was the skull inside of the Hello Kitty doll, some teeth on the ground, and organs in the freezer. Reading this story makes me just feel so horrible for Fan Man Yi and the torture she went through. This is definitely the worst true crime case I've ever read about. And then there are just so many more details I can't even say. Let me know what you guys think about this case in the comment section below. And as always, these videos are for informational purposes only. Man, what do people be thinking about? 20 years ago, I was kidnapped from my friend's front yard by a man that was a total stranger. And I found out later a serial killer. I had spent the night with a friend. My friend and I called another friend who lived at the lake and she invited us over and I mean, a day in the sun by the water. Are you kidding? Of course we're there. We called my friend's mom and she asked if there was anything that we needed to do before we left the house. And her mom asked if we could just water the plants. My friend wanted to take a shower. I volunteered to do that. And that was the beginning of a different phase of my life and a decision that probably saved my friend's life and mm. definitely changed my life. I was outside watering the plants. I had no shoes on and I was 15. I was getting ready to get my license. I had driven my mom's boyfriend's car and it was a Pontiac Trans Am and I, and I loved the car. So when one drove by on the way out of the neighborhood, I noticed it. It's not a thing that I maybe would have noticed normally, but I noticed this mm. car. So. Okay. When it came back into the neighborhood, I immediately noticed it again. Uh, it pulled directly into the driveway and gets out of the car, comes directly over to me. He has a binder in his hands. He is wearing like a button down shirt. He's wearing jeans. He looks relatively clean cut. And he says that he was driving around. He saw me outside. He had some magazines or some pamphlets that he was giving out. And he asked if my parents were home. Now mm. I knew not to tell people that I was home alone right. but you're in the moment and you just respond authentically so but this is my friend's house and he asked if her mom was home and I said no he said oh, well I'll just leave these for you this whole interchange he's a good distance away from me and so no red flags until he reached in to give me the pamphlets and that's when I felt a press to the side of my neck mm. my reaction was to freeze so when I felt the cold metal on my neck and he said, come with me. I said, stop. And he said, why don't you come with me? I kind of, this is in a little bit. And, uh, and I did. I walked mm. around to the driver's side. He opened the door. He put the seat forward and said, get in. I looked in the back seat and there was a plastic container. And he said, get in the container. My Whoa. survival mechanism was to remain calm and attempt to appease him so that he, at some point, will let his guard down and I'll be able to escape. We drive for about 10 minutes before he pulls over to the side of the road, takes the lid off of the container, and at that point, he puts a ball gag in my mouth and restrains me and tells me to scream as loud as I can, mm. which I do, and he says, oh, good. And then he drives for a couple more minutes before he stops, picks up the container with me in it, and carries it short way and drags it over a threshold into his apartment where i am for the next 18 hours wow wow luckily she's alive but keep going what the hell the, portal, the donkey opened the gate And they get it in too. Someone comes in. Make 
magazine on the table starts to move. Hello? Whoa. It's extremely cold now. Watch the pumpkin. The joint about to fall off the table? This is the Wagner execution, one of the most controversial execution videos explained. The video that I'm about to explain was uploaded on Telegram and it went pretty viral. It begins by showing the victim in a dark room with his head taped to concrete blocks on the wall. Behind him, a man holding a sledgehammer and wearing camouflage clothes can be seen. Dimitri, who is the victim, then says, I went to the front part of the Wagner group, but while I was on the front line, I realized this isn't my war. Mm. Today, I was on the streets of Nepro where I was then hit in the head and lost consciousness. And when I woke up, I was in this room where they told me I would be put on trial. Mm. After he reads this statement, his head, which is taped to the concrete blocks on the wall, is hit extremely hard by the man with the sledgehammer in the side of his head. What? Which crushes his head completely and causes his body to fall back on his back. The killer then continues to smash into the face of Dimitri over and over. Jeez. But the weird part about this video, and what makes it extremely controversial, is that a second video was posted of Dimitri claiming that the Wagner group spared his life. He said, in Wagner, everyone has the right to correct his mistake. When I got to captivity, I told a lot of stuff, but I'm still ashamed. But it was my only option to stay alive. When mm. I got back from captivity, I brought back valuable intel which saved many lives of our boys. And for that reason, I have been forgiven. This has mostly everybody doubting the authenticity of the video. And many people think it's just an attempt to troll the Wagner group, and others suggesting the video might just be completely staged. But whatever the truth is, I doubt we will ever find out. It's just weird that the man that was executed on video was then seen in another video saying that his life was spared. I don't know, it's just odd, but nonetheless, this video is still extremely brutal and graphic, and I don't recommend searching for it. <sighs> this stuff is wild. God really right, saw me. just do Bible songs on him, so yeah. don't just gonna... He's no, that's not, that's not how he looks. I go to St. Philomary Church, right. that's not how he looks in there. He has like a beard, he doesn't have long hair, he has I short have, hair. His eyes were the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Mm. Really? Mom, if you've seen them, if you would have saw them, you would have said they were beautiful, more beautiful than mine. Mm. And his lips, they never chapped, he said. No. Even happens, like your lips are just perfect. His lips were perfect. His lips were perfect. And mom, he said that you, you the reason you went through so much when you were little, he said it because that's why the way you are today. He said that's why you are so good at what you do today. Wow. He said that your kids are like you because of you. He said that they're gonna grow up to be just like you. Mm. And he said that me, I'm gonna make you very proud. Perfect. Wow. 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 Touching. Pleasure from the day Caleb was found. Do you know where your buddy is? Charlie? Yes. He shot him. He shot him? Shot. Who did? Douche. Todd Kohep shot Charlie Carver three times in the chest, wrapped him in a blue tarp, put him in the bucket of the tractor, locked me down here, and I never seen him again. Okay. He says he's dead and buried. He says there's several bodies dead and buried out here, and he okay. says that the dogs will be ruined if they go looking because there's red pepper. We're going to step you up, sweet dog, because there's what? Red pepper. Okay. Tell the dog people that. Mm. He says no, there's pepper everywhere. The first like two weeks I was there in the building, my ankles were cuffed, my hands were cuffed behind my back, and I had a chain around my neck. I didn't really even move for the first week or so I was there. Wow. What did Todd do while you were there? We would get there between 1 and 3 o'clock every day, take me up to the main building, feed me. 
whatever he wanted sexually, and then he'd put me back in the building. And then he would always come back between five and seven, take me back up to the building, beat me again. Most of the time, do whatever, get whatever out of me he wanted sexually again. And I refused to do anything he wanted. Creepiest home camera of footage PT.8. Chicago man and woman got the scare of a lifetime. A known man appeared inside their home one night. What? A known man appeared at the crib. He just popped in. We entered their home through an unlocked door. Stop fucking playing. What's up with these people in these unlocked doors? Unlocked door and silently watched the couple who have fallen asleep on the couch. Oh, hell no. The couple became curious when a purse went missing, so they checked their home security cameras. That's when they saw a figure standing Believe at the top. Believe he walked up several flights of the building's back stairwell and entered through an unlocked sliding door that leads to the master bedroom. Hell no. Nah. What'd you do if you woke up to a creepy stranger? <laughs> Answer that in the comments, man. What would you do? Come on. If you don't believe in, so well, after seeing this. See nothing. People who got stuck in strange places. An ATM. What? The work How it happened? Looks for the ATM vestibule when he was locked in because he left his swipe card in the truck. Poor fella also left his phone so he couldn't call for help. But the ATM was working just fine, and what he did have was a pen and paper. Unfortunately for him, everyone who got the note thought it was a bizarre joke. And the mm. poor man was stuck for two hours until someone took it seriously enough to call the cops. Wow. Still, they eventually came to the man's rescue, kicking down the door to finally get him out. <laughs> now there's a man who's never been so happy to get away from a cash machine. <laughs> Crazy. That, yeah, that is weird. Please help, I'm stuck here. To this ATM in Corpus 
Corpus Christi Wednesday afternoon got a lot more than they were asking for. A contractor got trapped inside the ATM room at the Bank of America branch while changing out a lock. He can't get out. He can't call anybody because his phone is in his truck. That's when he started getting creative. The man wrote please help notes and slid them through the ATM's receipt slot. Some customers thought it was a joke, but fortunately, one called police. Sure enough, we can hear a little boys coming from the machine. Wow. Officers kicked down the door to free the man. He'd been trapped for about two hours. You'll never see this again in your life. That somebody stuck in the ATM machine. It was just crazy. Gotta do better, buddy. You guys, I'm freaking out right now. Do you see this guy behind me? I'm in Target right now and he's been following me literally for the last like 15 minutes. Babe. Up, babe? babe. Baby, do not freak out, but I'm at Target right now. Oh my god. And this guy has been following me. Wait, calm, calm down. Calm no, 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 no. I'm not even joking. I need you to come. I'm so scared. Are you here? Oh my god. I'm just so fucking happy. I'm what in the happened? car right now. That shit was so it. scary. I've never had somebody follow me like that. Like, he right, literally. So he's gone now. Oh my god. I'm shaking. Fuck. I don't know what yeah, where he's at. Room or something? No, I took a video. I was on Where the phone with you and I took a video of it. I'll show so, it to you right after. So look. Don't even go so back. I'm so too you just scared. See where you, where's your car at? My car's over here. I filmed the whole thing so I could turn it into the police. This is, it's that scary. He's wearing a ski mask, okay, big well, ass. You don't know what he looks like. What, how you was? Nothing? He was like 6'4 at least. He was hella tall. I'll show you the video. Like right after this, I filmed everything. Like everything. I, I swear to God, the craziest part is this, I saw him at the gym. I swear I saw him at the now, gym. What like, he like, what a mask? Yeah, he was like 6'4 wearing a black like hood, hoodie in the gym a black and he a was ski, outside the gym and a ski mask i swear i'm not why am i why would i make that right. i'm not saying but you say you, you don't know what he looks like he's been following you six out. four he's wearing a black ski mask he's wearing a black jacket he's wearing black sweats and big ass fucking boots and he has a limp like walking weird sophia listen to me look i love you but you baby you can't wear this stuff by yourself at target at nighttime mm. at nighttime okay no but like he started following me during the I know, day i know i know i know i know i know but you can but yeah if you're wearing gym clothes baby just try and wear extra just just because guys are weird as shit right now come on can we just follow me yeah follow, follow me is this real just check under my car what is that what is that Derek? This shit gotta be fake. Fuck, I'm so scared. When the fuck? Hold on, let me see. That means she's watching right now. Hi guys. I was just able to take a shower and just kind of sit down and chill. I went to the police station pretty much right after I last talked to you guys and just took down a lot of information. Derek was there with me, so I don't know. It was just a really scary experience and I showed them a video, they kind of just asked me a bunch of questions and I had to fill out this report. I was so freaked out when we were walking into the police station, I literally just ate it because I was like shaky and nervous. I still feel all weird uh, because that was probably one of the craziest nights of my life and I, it was just really scary. So I'll keep you guys posted and hopefully they can find this guy. Well, I hope she all right. This is maybe the scariest urban legend I've ever heard, and it ended up being true. Back in the 1970s, there was this terrifying fun house in Long Beach, California called The Laugh in the Dark. And there was always this urban legend that all the mannequins inside were fake, except for one. Also, mind you, this is what this week's episode is about, so if you don't want spoilers, just listen to the episode. This urban legend came to be because there was one mannequin inside that just looked wrong. All the other ones looked fake, but this one in particular looked way too human. And a bunch of the kids also said the area that the mannequin was in just smelled really, really bad. So a few years go by and one day a film crew comes in and is using Laugh in the Dark for a film set. The director's lining up a shot and he just doesn't like the way this one mannequin looks in frame. So he goes over to a crew member and he's like, hey, can you just move this out of the shot? So the crew member goes over and starts moving the mannequin when its arm pops off. And inside of the mannequin's arm is human bone. The what? kids had been totally right. The mannequin was a mummified body. There's so much more to this story, like who the person was and how they got there. And I talk about the whole thing this week on the episode. Hell no, nah, bro. People, this world is crazy. Real life alien abduction. In 
incident occurred in a family home on Thanksgiving during a blackout. Footage was recovered from a handheld camera. The boy in the video was never seen again. seen again two girls are alone in their house when one of them sees something in the doorway pause the video and you can see it's clearly the upper half of a young girl who is dressed in old-fashioned clothes from another time period she is floating in midair as she curiously peeks in on the two children to see what they are doing one of the girls still doesn't see the ghost she shouts at something that's on television and accidentally startles the ghost away the girl with the camera follows the ghost as it retreats the ghost instantly teleports and now stares at them from the top of the steps Hell the scared nah. girls run out of the house screaming they stop only for a second to turn around from the street. They can see the ghost girl walking across the left window on the top floor. It vanishes and then suddenly appears on the bottom floor in less than a second. What? They scream even louder and take off again. Number 2. Stay out of the attic Back in 2008, a man started to notice some strange activities around his house. He would often come home from work to find his dogs cowering under the bed, too afraid to come out. One of his dogs would mm. only come out from under the bed for a brief 10 seconds at most before going straight back into hiding. Wow. Something was intimidating these large dogs badly. The wow. owner starts to hear banging noises coming from all over his house. He begins to look around. He eventually traces the noise to his attic and goes upstairs with a camera for a closer look. Everything uh -oh. is completely trashed. Boxes are overturned and clothing is scattered everywhere. Something has violently flung all of his personal possessions all around. As soon as he goes back downstairs, he hears another huge bang and runs right back up the steps. He puts the camera down and searches the empty attic for clues. A nearby metal bucket falls over and he runs out of the room before he gets hurt. Another object hits the Whoa. ground on its own and the camera moves to the right on its own too. The homeowner was too scared to look at the footage. He waited a week before going back upstairs to get his camera. By oh. now, he is understandably quite paranoid. He begins recording everything he does in his home, and it isn't long before he has more paranormal evidence. One day, his radio turns to static and a spirit orb rushes out the window. Later, someone violently jiggles the doorknob to the door that leads to the attic. Ooh. The door opens and shuts by itself. The no. radio goes back to normal soon after. Things look to be going back to normal for a second, but then a paper towel roll suddenly flies up from the table to the couch, and the radio starts making more sounds again. Hell. The video recording starts to get Get fuzzy too, as if a ghost is causing electrical disturbances by passing by. Both of his dogs begin to look in the same spot as if they are following something. Whatever it was, the man was never able to physically catch it on film. He was only able to record its strange and oftentimes violent behaviors. Number 1. Ghoul School this footage comes from somewhere in the Middle East. A group of teenagers are curiously exploring an old Hell school. No. They go up a flight of steps and pause when they hear a dog whining on the other side of the door. They all run down the steps and gather at the bottom. They're afraid of being attacked by a group of stray dogs now, but they decide to press on and explore the lower areas. The group finds bravery in their numbers and begins to joke and laugh again as they make their way down a long hallway. They open a door and find graffiti on the wall. Other people had been here before them. Maybe this place isn't so bad after all. The teens grow a little more nervous as they continue to poke around. They are laughing less and starting to go silent. Something just isn't right about this section of the building. A YouTuber named Zobin Jaguar translated their comments. He says at this point one of the teens say that their phone shut itself off even though it was fully charged only a moment ago. Another person was able to keep recording, though they probably now wish they hadn't. They mm. enter one classroom in particular and get a dreadful feeling. Suddenly a figure actually appears out of thin air and walks towards them. The ghost is missing what? his head, but there's somehow no blood. A loud chanting begins as soon as the ghost walks towards them, loud but this chain. may be prayers from a nearby mosque. Amazingly, the group all appears to have missed the ghost, Whoa. which explains why they calmly continue to keep exploring. They wouldn't it. see the apparition until much later, but when they did, they would never forget what was heading straight towards them in that room. Bro, how you gonna miss that right in front of you like that? Jerry Bruce is a father who loves spending time with his children. If you hop over to his channel, you'll find that most of his videos have a wholesome quality to them. However, out of all the videos on there, two in particular stand out from the rest. These two videos are different in that they show something that doesn't fit with the family-friendly content of this channel. If anything, they seem to have come from a horror movie, one that is based on a family terrorized by paranormal activity. As it turns out though, that's exactly the case here. 
Jerry has been encountering strange occurrences in his home that seem to be paranormal in nature. On May 26 of 2009, he is suddenly woken up by a strange noise inside his living room. He immediately grabs his phone and begins to record. Jerry writes, I have never seen anything like this. My wife and I were awakened by the sound of a door closing. This video is all I got before me and my family left the house. Mm. This is what he caught. Yeah, turn the lights on. Thank you. He about to open the door. Here we go. Let me back up. I don't know what the hell. Here we go. Back up, buddy. Oh, shit. Something about to pop out. Uh-oh. Strangely, the handle on the other side of the door is being turned as though someone inside were doing this. But, as shown in the video, what? no one is in there. An encounter like this would definitely spook anyone. But then again, there are some who might write this off as being caused by a draft entering the handle's lock. No. Although it isn't sure if that's the case, it's the second video that seemingly dispels this notion. On July 11 of 2009, Jerry's recording his son when all of a sudden something really creepy happens. Take a look. Not with the baby around, man. Someone will be at the door. Whoa! The same closet from the first video can be seen opening on its own. Then, seconds later, a toy flips over by itself. It almost seems like whatever had been inside had tripped over this toy in its attempt to get to the child. Mm. It is immediately then that he grabs his son and rushes out of the living room at once. Understandably, Jerry was totally spooked. Viewers believe that he might be dealing with something paranormal. but. As with most what? videos, it's hard to be sure if that's so. Could it be that a supernatural presence resides in Jerry's closet? Or is something else going on here? You be the judge. Mm -mm. Alright, so that was another conspiracy, creepy, scary TikTok video. Hey man, look man. Some of those stories was extremely disturbing, crazy. Take care of yourself, man. Stay alert, stay vigilant. If you made it to the end of this one, make sure you drop in the comments. You a real one for real. This was intense. I got chills for sure on this video. Um. Also, I got a TikTok playlist. You can go watch it, but this gave me chills, man. Y'all wanted me to bring back some of the scary stuff. It was some scary stuff in that one. But till next time, man, self-love and positivity. Make sure you hit that like button. Fire Squad, I got you when you know it. Boom.